If we get Moat America off the ground, you'll be seeing much more of our next guest. He's our hero who has fought his way back from ban after ban, sanction after sanction, with such calm, cool, and collected analysis that, in my view, he's earned the title, the coolest cat on the Potomac. He is, of course, Garland Nixon, and he joins us now. Garland, thanks uh, for joining us again on the mother of all talk shows. We always miss you when you're not here. Let me start with the Kennedy story, can I? Has Joe Biden's decades late release of a few of the documents of the Kennedy assassination stilled the clamor amongst the public for the truth of that? Or did it do too little too late? Well, it was about what was expected. I think the fact that the government continues after all of these years to actually defy the law, which says that um, they're supposed to release these documents, simply, I wouldn't use the word fuels, I would say cements what people already intuitively know. And that is that the um, intelligence agencies were involved, that they have been involved in massive cover-ups. That's, ex uh, that's documented. And certainly the question is out there, why would the CIA, why would the intelligence community in the United States hide any information um, that could lead to the arrest and prosecution of someone who killed the president of the United States unless they were involved. And uh, I, so I think people already intuitively know the answer. And this just cements the, that there's something being hidden. Yeah, I mean, now the polls show more than 80 percent of Americans believe what was in 19. 63, 64, described as a conspiracy theory, a lesson to all of us, uh, Garland. Uh, now, uh, many years later, of course, almost 60 uh, years later, there's hardly anyone in America who any longer believes in the official version. And that's before we get talking about what happened to Dr. King and to Malcolm X and to Senator Robert Kennedy and so on. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a remarkable transformation, and yet it was left to a right-wing commentator on a right-wing television station, Tucker Carlson, to make the clearest, the most eloquent denunciation of U.S. state involvement in this crime. How come? Well, that's because the Democratic Party, which masquerades as a left party, which certainly um, when you if you evaluate the Democratic Party in the United States by the traditional standards that would, um, you know, differentiate the left from the right, there is nothing left about them. They, you know, just use a few cultural issues to argue that they're left. But it's because the United the uh, Democratic Party is completely I wouldn't say absorbed by the um, by the national security state. I would say simply a party, an extension of the national security state. So no one within the Democratic Party is ever going to push back against something that would besmirch the holy name of the national security state, which they so worship. So uh, Tucker Carlson, it's what's amazing is that you know Fox News, that a conservative um, news outlet would be the one that would allow pushback against the against the um, you know, the prevailing winds of the national security state. I'm quite frankly surprised that it's even allowed on Fox News, but I'm glad about it. Certainly the rest of the Democratic Party is just part of the problem rather than um, a group that could look into and solve the problem. Now, speaking of the security state, uh, we learn more with every batch of Twitter files uh, that the American security state has been running Twitter all these years. Uh, what did you make of the latest revelations that the FBI were practically in control of the uh, Twitter platform, which was supposed to be the public square? Yeah. And, you know, one could argue that um, what they were doing at Twitter was simply an extension of the whole Russiagate um, operation. People call it a hoax. I call it an, an illegal criminal operation. And what they were doing at Twitter was just an extension of that. You know, one of the things I think the the, the most glaring legal violation or potential legal violation I see is um, regarding Hunter, the, the um, Hunter Biden's laptop, where in fact the FBI in December of 2019 
um, confiscated Hunter, Hunter Biden's laptop. In fact, the guy at the Delaware um, computer shop called them. They responded there, they interviewed him, and they took the laptop. So they knew that Hunter Biden's laptop was, in fact, the original laptop. They had interviewed the person who got it. At that point, they contacted Twitter and likely the other social media um, companies and told them the opposite. They then contacted Twitter, having the laptop, knowing that it was, in fact, the original laptop. And they said to Twitter that they thought the Russians were going to do a hack and dump somewhere around the um, uh, the time of the election and that Twitter needed to adjust their um, terms of, of service so that they could more easily censor it. So they again, they ran a deliberate misinformation operation on the American people telling the social media companies the opposite of what they knew was true. So, I mean, to me, there couldn't be a more blatant violation of the law and that they deliberately um, um, and willfully with malice and a forethought took actions in a way that they knew would um, affect the outcome of the election or at least intended to out, uh, outcome the, 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 um, the election because they lied. They, they said the opposite of what they knew. Um, I think that also calls Congress into question because at the minute that Congress finds that out, they have to initiate an investigation into that. But Congress is, you know, is, uh, uh, as quiet as can be. Galland, I don't know if you can still hear me. Yes. I can no longer hear you. But if you can hear me, I wanted to ask uh, if in the light of these revelations, which are treason on a much greater scale than a bunch of lunatics turning up in raccoon hats at uh, the Senate building on January 6th, it, it's, it's a much more egregious and obvious breach of the American Constitution, the, the laws of the Republic. Uh, will anything happen as a result? Well, I hope you can hear me. Um, but no, I don't see anything happening. Um, certainly the, um, the Republicans are captured by the same uh, group, the same um, powers, the same entities that have captured the, um, the, the Democratic part, the, Demo uh, the, the Democrats. I would um, suspect that the Rush, uh, excuse me, that the Republicans will do some investigations and in service to the national security state, all of their findings will be related to China. They will find arguments that China did something wrong, China was involved, and China is evil. And that seems to be the direction that they're going into. Certainly the Democrats won't um, take any actions. They'll, they've, they've, they will move to block anything that the Republicans are gonna do. do. So I don't look at a, um, a real, true and honest outcome for this reason. If in fact, the people of America knew what the national security state was doing, if they knew what the FBI did, if they were able to look at this and find out exactly what the FBI has done, it would shatter the very faith that people have, what little is left in our Republic. It would be so major and it would just keep going back to the Department of Homeland Security. It would go back to all of these entities. We know that the, um, the DNI, the Director of National Intelligence Office was involved. So this was a broad operation throughout the government throughout the national security state and i i um you know think the american people should know but if they knew how could the government continue to stand in the united states if that if if, if that and of course we've got to add this and all of this is simply an extension of Russiagate. They continue to do the same things that they did during the crossfire hurricane uh, um, investigation. And a, a number of these particular issues that they were uh, addressing came right out of Russiagate. Now, uh, you and I have both got huge bones of contention uh, with uh, Twitter uh, and therefore with its ownership of uh, Elon uh, Musk. But you'd have to concede, wouldn't you, that he has turned out to be uh, a tiger amongst the pigeons. He's got them fluttering uh, everywhere in the dovecot. Uh, would he be well advised not to go driving down Elm Street in an open-top limousine into Dealey Plaza 
If you get my drift. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you. You know, Elon Musk has made some statements le uh, lately where he said he was concerned about um, assassination. And I think um, it was smart of him to say that because it makes it harder for them to, you know, have for him to, you know, have an accident in a small plane or, you know, how it usually goes. Um, but, uh, you know, the issue of Twitter to me is not related to Elon Musk. One of the things that happens in the United States is they create these anger or rage towards an individual, whether it's Vladimir Putin or Donald Trump or Elon Musk. So they create a dynamic where everybody is enraged at this person and then they can go after the person because people will say, well, I hate him. I don't care if the government might as well go after him. And the mainstream media is in the process of creating this wave of anger and rage against Elon Musk. But I think there are the, the fact of the matter is that outside of the Democratic Party echo chamber, a lot of Americans either aren't on Twitter and don't know that much about it or are welcoming um, an open uh, platform. So, you know, to me, I don't like to get into this politics of personality where Elon Musk is either the hero or villain. I prefer to evaluate what's going on at Twitter. There is more openness. There are certainly people got to mention Scott Ritter, who should be back on Twitter and some aren't. OK, but um, I think it's a very positive thing that the there's information coming out from the inside. And we now know that the social the the um, the national security state is directly involved in social media. We know that it's happening in Google and in um, Facebook and Instagram, they're all doing the same. So we kind of intuitively suspected it. Now we have the evidence. I think that's a positive thing. Yay for Elon Musk for doing it. That doesn't make him a hero or a villain. That just makes him a, a, a human being who, in this instance, maybe have done some of the right things. Now, uh, another billionaire oligarch, uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, is uh, throwing his staff at the Washington Post to the wolves. It seems like uh, there's, there's a state of some chaos in media in the United States. The days of the hegemony of the New York Times and, and CBS and Washington Post and so on are very, very far behind us now, aren't they? Uh, as we heard from an earlier guest, if you, want the war, if you want the war news on the Ukraine, you get it on Telegram. The, the real journalism about the war is on Telegram. It sure ain't in the Washington Post. No wonder Bezos is throwing them on the on the unemployment scrap heap. Well, I, you know, all um, people out there have to do is look at the numbers for your show, the mother of all talk shows. You know, I started like a year ago, less than a year ago, maybe seven or eight months ago doing a YouTube show and I'd have like 30 people watching. I did an episode last night. I had 1500 people. So I think that what's going on, it's not that I'm something great or, you know, some of the alternative media people. We're not geniuses. However, um, I think there is a, a hunger and a thirst out amongst the public for um, an alternative respect perspective. I won't even call it an alternative for for at least an unbiased perspective, for at least people who are searching for the truth and who aren't wholly captured by the corporate state and the national security state. And what the mainstream media is experiencing is a wave of people who are exiting. You know, you can go. What difference does it make if you go to The Washington Post or The New York Times? If you want to hear what an anonymous security official said, um, you can go to any of those and, and get that. I think people are wise to that. They're going to people like us and Jimmy Dore and on and on. And um, I think the mainstream media is trying to figure out how to deal with the exodus of their viewers, but they're not going to be able to do it because they would have to act in a way that would compromise, uh, you know, Jeff Bezos's all his his um, contracts with the federal government. Well, he can't just throw them out by telling the truth on the Washington Post. Uh, exactly. So uh, finally, and I'm grateful for your time, Garland, uh, what of Trump? Uh, he said he had a very big announcement to make. It turned out to be the launch of, I don't know, some. it looked like a baseball cards uh, with his uh, idealized image uh, on it. Is that really all he's got to say or has he still got something big up his sleeve? 
Well, you know, that's not, to me, that doesn't su surprise me for Donald Trump. That's kind of the kind of thing I would expect from Donald Trump. He can be kind of a cartoonish image at times. That being said, um, there are a lot of people that are counting Donald Trump out. You know, he has no chance. I think one of the things that could happen with Donald Trump, you know, DeSantis is moving up. However, Donald Trump has a very, very solid, let's say 30, 35 percent of the Republican Party. He has a very that base, very, very solid. I suspect that, uh, you know, DeSantis and, and several other people that you will see that will be attractive to some people in the party will just simply split the votes. And, and you'll st he'll still have that 30 or 35 percent. The other people will split the votes up. Certainly the system will try to jump in, do like they did with um, Joe Biden and try to get everybody to jump out and leave, you know, DeSantis for him. But I suspect that... Um, I suspect that Donald Trump is still very, very strong. There's this there's discussion now about charging Donald Trump relative to January 6th. If you really look over that, there's, you know, you could charge anybody with anything, but the idea that you will get a um, conviction based on the kind of mealy mouth, you know, a, a amorphous kind of um, you know, whisperings that they call evidence is absurd. So even if they charge Donald Trump Trump with something, which I doubt would happen, I just see no universe where you get a conviction. And then, of course, if you go after a person and you don't get them, they always they're always much much stronger. And they say, "Look at me, I was almost a martyr. I, you know, the the system came after me and I survived." They just make Donald Trump stronger. Yeah, if you go for the king, you better not miss. Garland Nixon, thanks very much indeed.